Welcome to section two. Now, while you can use one AWS account to host a vast array of resources, workloads, and applications, you may wish to consider distributing them across multiple AWS accounts. In this lecture, we look at why designing a multi-account architecture might be a better approach for your AWS cloud journey. When you first begin your AWS journey, you could be forgiven to think that a single AWS account is all you need to host your applications. An AWS account provides natural security, access and billing boundaries for your AWS resources, and enables you to achieve resource independence and isolation. If you have a single AWS account, you will host a wide variety of different workload types, including ones that deliver security services, internal infrastructure shared services, external client-facing services, as well as cater for all of your experimentation efforts as you build new and improved solutions for your business. Your internal users, colleagues, and even on-premise teams will access your AWS account to build resources and workloads as required by the business, and your external users and customers will access your client-facing applications. But is this the best strategy? The fact remains that hosting these wide range of different resource types in your single AWS account will quickly lead to some huge administration and management exercises. There are several disadvantages to hosting all of these different services in a single AWS account. Firstly, you have extensive management overhead as you try to separate different workload types. You'll also have to define complex security controls to ensure resource isolation and segregation. You may also end up having an inability to fulfill certain security or compliance requirements. These could include things like HIPAA or PCI compliance, for example. And then there is billing management. As you try to devise complex cost allocation tags to ensure that you're able to identify which workloads, projects, and applications attribute to your AWS charges. AWS recommends that you set up multiple accounts as your workloads grow in size and complexity. Using a multi-account environment is an AWS best practice that offers several benefits. Let's take a look at these next. With AWS multiple accounts, you can group workloads based on business processes and ownership. With multiple accounts, you can cater for different business units and their individual processes which may differ from each other. Isolation of business units can help them operate with greater decentralized control. And at the same time, you can still enable overarching guardrails using management and governance tools like AWS organizations. We discuss this service in an upcoming lecture. Another benefit is that of security control. It is common to apply different security and operation processes for production and non-production environments of a given workload. By using separate accounts for your production and non-production environments, you can enforce appropriate security policies. Next, we have sensitive data. Having separate accounts that store and limit access to sensitive data will help you achieve the principle of least privileged access. An additional benefit is that of being able to promote innovation and agility. Hosting separate accounts to support experimentation, development, and early testing provides greater freedom than the more tightly controlled production-like environments. For example, sandbox accounts are typically disconnected from your enterprise services and do not provide access to your internal data. This offers the greatest freedom for experimentation. Another benefit is being able to limit the potential blast radius. By design, all resources provisioned within an account are logically isolated from resources provisioned in other accounts. Having multiple accounts will help limit the potential blast radius of issues, such as security breaches or catastrophic events that happen in a given account from affecting resources in other accounts. Yet another benefit is that of being able to manage costs. An AWS account also defines a billing boundary with reference to any resources provisioned in that account. Using different accounts for different business units, workloads, and applications can help you more easily report, control, forecast, and budget your cloud expenditures. This can also enable you to determine the return on investment for your individual activities and projects. Finally, we also have the ability to distribute service quotas and API limits. Now, AWS enforces certain service quotas and API request limits that define the maximum number of service resources or operations that apply to an account. This is by design. 
to help prevent unexpected excessive provisioning of resources usually caused by errors or malicious activities. By using separate accounts, you can distribute the potential impact of quotas and limits. Ultimately, you should design a multi-account strategy that enables rapid innovation, fulfilling different business requirements, offers simplified billing and cost allocation, and helps you achieve flexible security controls. So as you can see, you should have separate accounts for your shared infrastructure services, accounts that take care of your security design and implementation, and other separate accounts to facilitate experimentation. What you don't want is something going horribly wrong in an experimentation account like a sandbox environment to affect your live production workloads. Finally, you should also have separate accounts for different environments for your client-facing applications. In the next lecture, we deep dive into some additional concepts related to the hosting and management of a multi-account architecture.